Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today I would like you to introduce to another old favorite of mine. It's the uh, now vintage Yaiso FT102 transceiver, HF, all bands, 160 to 10 meters. And um, it does uh, all modes, of course, and uh, with, an, with an extra board you have also access to AM and FM. Um, this particular one is very clean, very rare. Uh, um, in this day and age, normally the, the front panels are all chewed up and some knobs are missing and uh, uh, this one does not smell of nicotine, so I'm very happy about this. Pay attention to the front of the uh, transceiver, the front panel, make sure it's clean and free from nicotine. What you don't want to buy is a radio from a smoker. I used to be a smoker myself, so don't be offended if you still smoke, but nicotine is not the friend of amateur radio and electronics. This one typically has one of the uh, light meter bulbs out. I would just replace them with a uh, with LEDs, to be honest. They last forever and they're simple to fit. Um, much easier than hunting around. Much easier than hunting around for the right type of bulb. Uh, the frequency display is is clear. There are no bad elements, so the vacuum is intact. Um, have a quick look at the uh, VFO if it spins nice nicely and freely. Make sure the pots don't crackle and uh, also that the pots are all there. Let's move on to the bottom of the transceiver. And here's a top tip uh, for any heavy transceiver that you might buy. Um, pay attention to these bits here. Let me just zoom in. Eventually the camera might even focus. Um, have a look at the section where the front uh, feet are situated. These transceivers are very heavy and old. Chances are over the years there have been uh, the ownership has changed and they might have been shipped. Now shipping couriers never take great care of these heavy items and if they're not um, heavy, uh, and if they're not um, properly padded, even a small drop from say half a meter or even 10 centimeters can t can damage the sh damage this transceiver. The front the pointy front feet um, take most of the impact. This is true for this transceiver. And also for the Yaesu FT101ZD and the 901 and 902 series with their pointy front feet. They take all the impact, so um, if this ha has happened from a serious height or at serious forces, then there will be a dent in the case. So always check these areas if there are dents. And if there are, if there are stay away. Chances are uh, something underneath broke as well and the heavy transformer has been dislocated as well. That's a top tip. Make sure your transceiver is okay. Okay, take a good look at this section here. This flap hides the AM-FM board for this particular transceiver, which did not come as standard and it was an optional extra. Nowadays they are, red, uh, they are rare and if you find one, expect to pay between 100 and 150 bucks. Um, I haven't checked this transceiver really if the, the FM unit is in, inside. I could just change the mode dial, but uh, to show you what it looks like, I just open this compartment and see what we find. I'm in luck. The AM FM board is indeed fitted. You can see it right here. It allows for AM and FM operation. The uh, AM operation is particularly popular on the lower HF bands, um, 160 meters and 80 meters. You find AM stations most evenings, and FM is exclusively exclusively used on 10 meters and uh, yeah it's fitted so money saved there might be up for grabs very soon i've taken the covers of this transceiver and this is the top view and it appears to be remarkably clean there is no dust anywhere the transformer hasn't discovered the ht compartment is this one here let me zoom in normally signs uh, show signs of corrosion. This one is clean, but what I can see is that here on the RF board uh, the questionable relays that uh, go bad quite often, well they haven't been replaced, but um, apparently there must have been a problem because the dust covers, the plastic, the see-through plastic caps of the relays have been removed. So uh, I don't know if the previous owner or one of the previous owners attempted to clean these relays uh, they usually don't fall off by themselves, so I need to investigate if this board functions uh, normally. 
if not, um, I will have to sell the spares or repairs. Also, the uh, CW filter is, is not fitted, so... Uh, well, that's all right. I mean, I can live without. Always have a look at the back of the transceiver and make sure that the uh, back panel is uh, shiny and clean and has no signs of pitting or any any moisture. Um, this one appears to be fine. Um, also, the fan uh, has to be fitted. Make sure all these contacts are nice and clean and the accessory plugs have not been damaged. And uh, well, that's all you can do on the, at the back panel, really. Um, Let's move on. Okay, sorry about the shaky camera. I have to. Uh, I had to take it off the tripod. Um, I've taken um, the covers of the uh, HT compartment, the final compartment, off to show you what it looks like inside. You have the three valves, one, two, three. The three one, no, six one four sixes, and uh, each of them pushes out 50 watts. So the transceiver delivers a total of 150 watts. However, I would run it at 100 watts because the 50 extra watts are situated here. They run freely and always make sure there are no black spots on the, on the veins. These are sure signs of arcing and signs of abuse. Basically, it means somebody tuned with on full power for way too long. Keep them free from dust. They also encourage arcing. Um, pay close attention to the RF choke. That's the coil here in the middle. I hope the camera can pick this up. Um, it should be clean, no corrosion and certainly no breaks. This one is clean and uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, this can be easily replaced. You can use one of a 101ZD or 901902, just attach uh, the third uh, anode clamp and you're good to go. Um, the street price for this is around, well, <laughs> depends on the condition really. A good one sets you back 300 bucks, I would say, 350 bucks. A not so good one from 150, 200, and uh, you have to shop around. If you are capable of repairing these old um, transceivers, they are hybrid transceivers. Um, basically, they're not solid state all the way through. The final final um, compartment is a valve, so you need to twiddle with um, tune and load capacitors and load it up properly. Um, yeah, for those who are capable of uh, servicing these type of transceivers. You can get one for 100 to 150 bucks, but expect to have to put some some work into it, into them. Um, just make sure they are clean. If they're too dirty, and uh, then it's not worth hunting down the parts and refurbishing it. I don't think. And um, this one uh, was 100 bucks. Um, apparently, it has small, had a small fault on the preamps. Uh, I suspect it's the preamp relay that doesn't latch. Um, not a big deal. Preamps are very overrated. Um, but I have to look into it. Well, that's all I have to say for this one. You can get a nice antenna, matching antenna tuner for it as well. It's the um, FC102, I believe, and also a VF, an external VFO unit, um, a memory VFO unit. Hard to get, but uh, it can be a nice lineup. So uh, look around for these. They're fun to operate. There are no menus, just good old fashioned knobs. And uh, Basically, the receiver is quite lively. They hear whatever my more expensive transceiver hears. Um, amateur radio doesn't have to be too expensive. You can buy a transceiver for 5,000 pounds easily. I know that, but this one here, two, 300 pounds, gives you just as much enjoyment. I hope this was of uh, some use for you. And um, if so, subscribe, please. And uh, hit that little, little bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. For now, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you at the next one. God, the slide is bright. Better.